Hello? Hi there. Hi there, this is Pastor Jose Ochoa from Hope City Church, Sacramento. I want, I want to welcome, welcome you into my office. And I want to welcome you to this Bible study. Today we're going to be going into 1 Corinthians chapter 6. And uh, the book of Corinthians is a bit controversial. I mean, if I were to read the whole book, chapter by chapter, I'd get in trouble. What, what do you mean by that? Some of the verses today are not... Um, uh, Paul is not afraid to talk about controversial things. And so maybe we shouldn't be afraid to talk about controversial subjects. Because Paul talks about all kinds of different things in the book of Corinthians. He, he covers sexual immorality. Uh, he talks about all kinds of different subjects. And we're going to go into that today. And so don't get offended. Don't shoot the messenger. Uh, I'm just communicating what the Word of God says. And so don't get mad at me if I read a passage and it offends you. Like, I didn't write it. Paul did. <laughs> and I believe God was using Paul to write this letter to the church of Corinth, which is in modern modern day Greece. And so I believe what is read, what we read in the book of Corinth, what we read that was written to the book of written to the Corinthians is happening here in, in California. I, I read recently a, a Bible scholar called the book of Corinthians the book of Californians. Because what's happening, what was happening back then is still happening in our world today. So if you have your Bibles, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1. But before we get into the Word of God, I would like to pray for you, those that are online. So, thank you for joining our Bible study tonight. And so if you have any prayer requests, please type in your prayer requests. And um, I'd love to pray for you. I'll make sure I read all the comments uh, when it's over. Whatever you need prayer for, I'm gonna, I promise to pray for you at the end. Uh, after this is over, I'm going to read all your comments. If you need prayer for yourself, for a friend, for your health, I need, I know, please pray for my mom. Her power went out. And also, let me know, Do you like to? would you like to do the Bible study at 6 or 7? What time works best for you? I'm doing 6 today because I don't have uh, school this week. As you know, I'm a substitute teacher, and I had... I have a lot of time on my hands. So I didn't want to wait till seven to do it. Uh, so if six doesn't work out for you, let me know if seven's better for you. We can always move it back to seven. So let me pray. Father God, I pray in the name of Jesus. Your word says no weapon formed against us will prosper. I thank you, God, for those that are watching online. I pray you bless them. And we ask Jesus that you, you be with us. Uh, uh, you be the teacher. I want to just step step aside right now. You know more than me. So Holy Spirit, would you uh, enter my spirit and uh, help me to teach your word. Uh, what was written to Corinth surely applies to us today. So help us to figure out what you're saying to the church, what you're saying to your people. It's in your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. So, uh, if you have your Bibles, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1. And we read here. If any of you... And then, uh, let me title my message real quick. Uh, I'm going to call this, uh, Thou shall not sue... Thou shall not sue your brother. It, thou shall not sue your sister. Uh, other Bible commentators have wrote... Lawsuits against believers. This chapter has been, it's had different titles. But I'm going to call this, Thou shall not sue your brother. If any of you has a dispute with another, do not dare to take it before the ungodly. 
for judgment instead before the Lord's people. So, so if you have an issue with a, a brother or sister in the Lord, why are you taking it to the court? Paul saying, is it that serious? Or do you not know that the Lord's people will judge the world? I'll get into that later. And if you are not to judge the world, are you not competent, competent to judge trivial cases? Do you not know that we will judge angels? How much more the things in, of this life? Therefore, if you have disputes about such matters, do you ask for a ruling from those whose way is life is scorned in the church? So Paul's saying, okay, why are you taking this to court? You're going to have people that don't even believe in God judge the dispute between you and your brother. These people are ungodly. They don't understand spiritual matters. They don't have God in their life. Do you think they're going to really judge fairly? I say this to shame you. Is it possible that there is nobody among you wise enough to judge a dispute between believers? But instead, one brother takes another to court, and this in front of other unbelievers. The very fact that you have lawsuits among you means you have been completely defeated already. Why not rather be wronged? Why not rather be cheated? Instead, you yourself cheat and do wrong. So now Paul's calling out the hypocrisy that's taking place at this particular church. He says, you yourself cheat and do wrong. And you do this to your brother and sister. So all right, you want to take your brother to court for wronging you, but you're guilty of doing wrong too. So Paul is not ashamed, and neither was Jesus, to call out hypocrisy. See, in Jesus' day, there was a lot of hypocrisy. And in Paul's day, there was also hypocrisy in the church. And even in 2023, there's still hypocrisy in the church. And so Paul is saying that it's not okay to live in hypocrisy. And I believe Paul is saying this out of love, not out of hate. He said, hey, you're, you're double-minded. It, you, you're, you're, you're judging your brother or you want to take your brother to court, but you're, you're doing some wrong things too. And so I have some questions for you. Is it ever okay to take another brother to court? Please type in your comment. Yes or no. Is it ever okay to take another believer to court? That's the question I have for you. According to Paul, it is wrong. It puts a stain on the church when believers can't settle their dispute outside the church. So, a secular court, an ungodly, ungodly judge would say, Whoa, why are these two Christians fighting? Why can't they get along? They're, they both follow Jesus, don't they? I don't want to become a Christian. Christians fight all the time. So it, it, it puts a, a stain on the church when, when Christians fight in front of each other. I didn't plan on sharing this story, but I was working at UPS and there was another believer that worked with me. And one time him and I got in a big argument in front of a bunch of other supervisors because me and my friend were both Christian Supervisors. They weren't a lot of Christian supervisors at UPS, but me and him, we were friends. Actually, we went on a mission trip together. We we went to Ecuador together, and so we we're good friends. Uh, but we we weren't seeing eye to eye one day, and we got a big argument in front of everybody. And afterwards, I, I felt a check in my spirit, like like we weren't being God's salt and light in the work field that day by arguing and fighting in front of everybody. And 
I think every everybody knew I was a Christian, and I believe a lot of people also knew my friend was a Christian too. And they're like, "Why are they fighting over dumb things?" And we I don't even remember it was something dumb because I don't, I don't even remember to this day what we were fighting about. So Paul is saying, "Yes, there's going to be arguments. Yes, we're not always going to see eye to eye. But work out your differences. Don't start gossiping about your brother or your sister." Don't sue your brother or sister and take them to court because they did you wrong. Oh, that person owes me $100, so I'm taking him to court. Or that that person offended me, so I'm, I'm going to go to court and sue this person. Paul is saying we can't live like that. We Christians should be the most forgiving people on earth. I don't know if you're with me on Christmas. I, I talked about Emmanuel, God with us. If God is truly with us, we ought to be forgiving. Because God is forgiving. Question. Do you have something against another believer? Honest question. Only you could answer this question. Do you have something against another Christian? Are you harboring anger or bitterness towards another believer? Paul tells the church, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ, God forgave you. And this is what Jesus says to the church in Matthew 6, 14. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others of their sins, Your father will not forgive you of your sins. Oh, that's deep. Jesus says, oh yeah, you want God's forgiveness. God wants to give you forgiveness. He will forgive anybody. But are you willing to forgive those that have hurt you? And Jesus is talking to his disciples here. His followers. Forgive as God has forgiven you. He's telling Peter, you got to forgive Matthew. Matthew, you got to forgive Peter. Who do you need to forgive? One day, Peter had that question. He said, we read this in Matthew 18, 21. This is a very good question. Lord, how many times must I forgive my brother who has sinned against me? Great question. Is seven times enough? Actually, he said, is 70, yes, is seven times enough. Like, so just think about it. If somebody hurts you seven times, that's pretty generous. To like, all right, he did me wrong once. He did me wrong twice. He did did me wrong three times. Or she did me wrong four times. And then you're to forgive that person five times. Wow, that's, that's pretty merciful. If you're willing to forgive someone five times. But Peter takes it a step further. Hey, I'm willing to forgive someone seven times. That's God's holy number. But after someone hurts me seven times, I'm done with this person. I'm not going to forgive this person no more. And Jesus says, I tell you, not seven times, but 70 times seven. Wow. Do the math. That's 539 times. If we were to be honest, we're more like Peter than Jesus. Right? We're willing to forgive someone seven times maybe. But I'm not going to forgive someone 539 times. That's just way too much. I'll be a, a fool to let that person back into my life. If they hurt me that many times. All right. Forgiveness has nothing to do with trust. To my understanding, trust is something that's earned. But forgive it. For, forgiveness is something you have to give. How many? How many? How many? You know, you, you got to forgive me. I'm gonna hurt you. I've hurt my mom by by saying some bad things growing up. She's forgiven me. I've, I've hurt my brother. I've, I've hurt people in the church, not intentionally. Not. I've never maliciously wanted to hurt somebody, but I know I've. I'm not perfect. I know I've hurt people with my words. 
And, and we've all, we all need forgiveness. We all got, need God's forgiveness. And Jesus is saying we also need to forgive others. Don't keep score, Jesus is saying. Don't keep count how many times people have hurt you. You got to let it go. And Jesus goes on to say that we got to forgive people from the heart. You can't just mentally say, oh, I forgive this person. I mean, that's a good start. But we also got to forgive people and really mean it. We can't say, oh, we can't give people lip service. I forgive you. And to be honest, sometimes I got to ask God, help me to forgive this person from the heart. I've said that prayer a bunch of times. God, help me to forgive this person. Because sometimes I don't have the strength to forgive people. How about you? So is there someone you need to forgive from the heart? You don't have to answer that question like by typing yes or no. But I want you to answer that question. Is there somebody that comes to mind right now that you need to forgive? A sister? A brother? Is there somebody you need to forgive? And I, I believe we all need to forgive somebody. Maybe it's not somebody that goes to church. Maybe it's somebody that's outside church. Somebody that's hurt you a long time ago or recently. We, we, we need to practice forgiveness. That's what Jesus is saying. You've got to forgive people. Because I have forgiven you. Just think about if God was there keep track of all the times you have sinned I could venture to say that you have sinned more than 539 times I'm positive and throughout your life I don't know how old you are but you probably have sinned more than 500 times I know I have sinned more than 500 times and God has forgiven forgiven me all the times I've sinned not that I continued to sin on purpose we're, we're called to repent of our sins I often say we are to repent of our sins, not indulge in our sins. And that's what Jesus taught his disciples. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. And Paul is calling out the church, saying you got to repent of this bitterness. No more taking people to court. No more living a double life. you got to repent of your sins. And he says this, we will judge angels and the ungodly during the day of judgment. What does that mean? There's different commentaries on what that means. But to my understanding, either one or two things are going to happen on judgment day. Either Jesus is going to give us the wisdom to judge the god ungodly, ungodly, not the Christians, not those that are saved, but it talks about the ungodly, those that never came to Christ. And angels, the word angel can mean fallen angel. And so one day maybe God's going to give us the wisdom to judge the, the fallen angels and those that are ungodly, those that rejected Jesus. Or maybe we're going to sit with Jesus while he does the judging himself. I'm, I'm praying for that. I don't want to judge anybody. God is only... Only God could judge me. Remember what Tupac said? I heard a song recently. If God were to judge, maybe it would be worse. That's what Lecrae says. Because people always say that as a cop-out to live in sin. Only God could judge me. But a lot of times when people say that, when we, when we correct others, hopefully we do it in love. You don't want God to judge you. Because it may be worse. But maybe on the day of judgment, we're going to sit with Jesus while he judges the world. And all we could do is be in agreement because God's judgments are always righteous. They're always right on. I always say that Jesus is not like Judge Judy. I like Judge Judy. Great judge. But she doesn't always get it right. Sometimes she's wrong. Well, well, when God judges the world, when he, God judges the ungodly, his judgments are going to be perfect. They're going to be righteous. So maybe we're going to sit with Jesus. We're going to reign with Jesus when he makes these judgments. And all we can say is amen. Like we're in agreement. Or maybe he's going to delegate. 
judgment during this time. All right. And give us the wisdom how to judge people. Because right now, you and I don't have the power to judge people. I mean, especially when we talk about their eternity. Because we don't know everything about people. We don't know people's hearts. We don't know if they made that commitment to follow Jesus. We don't know if they accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. I mean, they could say they, they believe in Jesus, but are they living for Jesus? Are they really following Jesus? So, verse 6, chapter 6, verse 2 through 3. Do your own research on what that means. I'm doing my best to interpret what that passage means. It's a hard text to interpret. And Paul, but that's not the main subject here. The main subject isn't about judging the ungodly. It's not about judging angels. That's not the main subject. The main subject here is clear. Don't be taking your brother to court and allowing the ungodly to judge church disputes. That's the main subject here. Don't be a hypocrite. If you have something against your brother or sister, talk to him about it. Don't take it to, don't take it to court. It's not that serious. Try to work it out. Get other people, other believers involved. Even Matthew, even Jesus talks about how if someone sins against you, talk to your brother or sister one on one. If they won't listen to you, get a witness. Get another brother or sister to come to the table. If that doesn't work, then you get the church, other believers, to come to the table. And if they still won't listen to you and they're in the complete wrong, then that's when you could say, okay, we're not going to have fellowship no more. We, we can't be friends. Because you, you're going to continue to live in sin and hurt people when, when we're called to repent of our sins, not indulge in our sins. So Paul here is clearly pointing out the hypocrisy that was happening in Corinth. And I want, want to say tonight that there's still hypocrisy happening here in California in many churches today even in Hope City Church I'm sure that there's hypocrisy that takes place I might not see it but God sees it so Paul says in 1st Corinthians 1 8 instead you yourself cheat and do wrong and you do this to you your brother and sister. So he's like having trouble comprehending. How could you cheat another Christian? How could you wrong another believer? That's not right. Then he gives a, a, some examples of some sins that were taking place in Corinth. During the first century. And Paul sees some of these things happening outside the church. And he also sees some of these things happening inside the church or people that go to church he talks about sexual immorality idolatry and he says if you're practicing these things you will not inherit the kingdom of heaven which is pretty scary so those that are practicing sexual immorality having sex outside marriage because you know god created marriage for that marriage between a man and a woman and then he talks about idolatry, that's worshiping false gods. Adultery, we know what that is, that's cheating on your spouse. Then he talks about homosexuality. Yeah, let me say it again. He, Paul talks about homosexuality. I know that, that, that word now has negative connotations. Right? Uh, some translation says men... Uh, having sex with men. Then he talks about greed. And so this is what I want, I want to bring up in this study. A lot of times, a lot of Christians will focus on the sexual immorality as a big time sin. But in the same sentence, Paul talks about greed. Did you know being a greedy person is a sin? Do you struggle with greed I mean do you have trouble like giving to the church when the church supports missions when the, 
the church supports uh, all kinds of awesome things such as preaching the gospel to all nations actually hope city church we we support missionaries ever since we started our church we, we've been supporting supporting missionaries you can't uh, missionaries it costs money to, to fly overseas you can't tell the uh, Southwest hey I'm a missionary hook it up let me get on the plane for free they're gonna say nope you, you got to pay your money too I don't care if you're a doctor you still got to pay your ticket to go to El Salvador or wherever you want to share the gospel so I've noticed that a lot of Christians and I'm, sh I'm sharing from experience I've been a pastor since 2007 a lot of Christians they trust Jesus for their salvation oh I trust you Jesus you died on the cross for my sins you rose on the on the third day I, I believe in you Jesus but they don't trust Jesus with their wallet they won't give a dime to the church they won't give any money towards missions maybe they struggle with greed then we read about drunkenness we know what that is getting drunk all the time slander so Paul is not afraid to call us to call out what's he's what he's seen in the church and what's happening outside the church slander has to do with using abusive insults or using language to hurt people's reputation so it's like there's slander taking place and he's saying that's not right either and swindlers and swindler being a swindler is a double sin because you're lying to people and you're stealing their money and so Paul is saying you, you can't live in this type of lifestyle no more you got to repent of your sins whether it's the sin of sexual immorality idolatry adultery gay sex greed drunkenness drunkenness slander being a swindler this is not acceptable in God's sight those that practice these these things don't get mad at me read it for yourself first Corinthians chapter 6 verse 8 he says if you practice these things you will not inherit the kingdom of heaven and he, he goes on to say and and some of you were like this past tense but you were cleansed by the blood of Jesus and so Paul he does show the church hey a lot of you guys used to do all these things but you came to Christ and you're no longer like that so here's the next question I have for you have you done anything lately to offend God have you done anything lately to offend God and I, I'm not judging you I'm just asking a, a question and I got I asked that question for myself sometimes I was like I'll pray this prayer God have I, if I've done anything to offend you lately please forgive me because sometimes I could be have blind spots and I, I need to say that prayer right now God if I if I'm doing anything right now to offend you please forgive me and have you ever done anything to offend others lately and so this is what Paul is saying if, if you have done anything to offend God you got to repent of that sin and you also need to get right with others you can't say God forgive me of my sin and this I still hate Charlie though you can't say God forgive me my my sins I'm so sorry and then still want to take your brother to court that's hypocrisy is there anything you need to repent of repent means to change your mind it's like one minute you're thinking it's okay and the next minute you're like maybe that's not okay no I know that's not okay I, I need I can't do that no more I need to change and so you ask God forgive me help me to change help me to be more like Jesus more loving more kind more forgiving more patient remember the fruit of the Spirit is love joy peace patience kindness goodness gentleness faithfulness self-control and so Jesus says in Mark 1 15 I shared this verse with you earlier 
The kingdom of God has come near. He tells his disciples, Repent and believe in the good news. See, Jesus is saying this to his disciples and anybody that will listen to him. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent. I mean, turn from sins. Turn from your sin and believe in the good news. What's the good news? Jesus died on the cross for our sins. He rose on the third day. Remember, salvation is from sin, not into sin. Don't get it wrong. Oh, Jesus died on the cross for my sins, so now I could be a player. Oh, Jesus died on the cross for my sins, so now I could be a womanizer. Oh, Jesus died on the cross for my sins, so you know what? I'm going to cheat. I'm going to do this or that. No. Yes, he died on the cross for your sins. But now we got to leave those sins on the cross. We're not to like live a life that's unpleasing to God. Remember God, God says, be holy for I am holy. And the Holy Spirit gives us the power to repent of our sins. I know the Holy Spirit has helped me to repent of my sins. I know the Holy Spirit can help you to repent too. The Holy Spirit helps us to live that godly life. No, you're not going to be perfect. But we're, we're, we're supposed to be conformed not to the, to the pattern of this world. We're not supposed to be like everybody else, but more like Christ. And hopefully the longer you follow Jesus, the closer you resemble his likeness. More loving, more kind, more forgiving. So let me ask that question one more time. Is there anything you need to repent of? That's what Paul's asking. No, no that's what he's telling the Corinthians. You guys have to, you guys are living foul. You gotta repent of your sins. It's not okay to to say you're a Christian and, and continue to live in sin. Don't say you're a Christ follower if you're really following the devil. Maybe there is a stronghold in your life. I encourage you to share that with your brother or sister or your pastor. If you're struggling with something, talk to me about it. I'm not going to judge you. I'm going to pray for you. Talk to your sister about it. If she is really a sister in the Lord, she's going to pray for you. She's not going to condemn you. She's going to say, you know, I used to struggle with that too. And this is how I was able to overcome it. That's a good sister in the Lord. Or a good brother in the Lord is going to say, Hey, I, I don't struggle with that, but I've struggled with this. So I'll pray for you. You pray for me. A good brother in the Lord would say that. Yeah, I don't struggle with gossip, but I do struggle with lust. So I'll pray for you that God will help you to repent of, of, of gossiping all the time. And please pray for me that I, I, I'll overcome this, uh, this issue. Of the heart and this is what James tells the church therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed so that, this isn't talking about talking to a Catholic priest it could mean that too but it, it means talking to a brother and sister in the Lord therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other other so that you may be healed so instead of taking your brother to court, pray for your brother. Confess your sins. Ask him to forgive you. And if he won't forgive you, know that God will. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. So maybe you're struggling to forgive somebody. Maybe you're not. Maybe you're struggling with one of those those vices I, I mentioned earlier. Ask God to forgive you, and He'll forgive you. Ask God to help you to repent, and He will. So don't take your brother, don't sue your brother, don't take him to court. That's what Paul's saying. And if you're struggling with sin, get right with God, get right with others. Can I pray for you? And I'm going to pray for myself, because I'm not above you. Everything I, I read in the Bible, also, I do my best to apply. I don't want to be a hypocrite. I want to, what I read, I want to, I want to, 
I want to uh, repent of any sin I need to repent of. I don't want to live in sin. And I know you don't want to do that either. You don't want to live in sin either. Because you know what sin does? It hurts your relationship with God. And it's going to hurt your relationship with others. Father God, I just come to you in prayer. I pray in the name of Jesus that you help us to repent of sexual immorality, homosexuality, uh, idolatry, uh, drunkenness, uh, any of those sins that Paul listed, Lord. You said those that practice those things will not inherit the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God. So help us to turn away from sin and turn to you. We thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for us and overcoming death on the third day. And I pray you help us to forgive the people that have hurt us. Amen. Well, love you. Thank you for joining me tonight. Hope to see you next week. God bless you. Have a good night. Bye.